Welcome to the Empire Show Episode 2 with your host Kingslot. Hey, this is ER Pod Joey. And who and is? This is Motherfucking Grizzly. And we are here with, as I might have said, Episode 2 of the Empire Sunday Podcasts. So, what have we got for the day? Well, we have our first topic that we like to discuss. Early access on Steam. Now, if you guys don't know what early access on Steam is, if you're not a PC user or a console or a console player, early access is where you can put a game up on Steam that has not been finished. You can pay money towards the game and it might get supported, it might not get supported, and it might not even get finished. So we're so, going to have a debate. Basically, it's like buying a, a full cake, but you only get half the cake. Pretty much. It's like a burger, for example. You get the burger, but to get the sauce, to get the lettuce, to get... you have to put money down, and it might you might not even get that. So we're going to talk about why it's a good thing or a bad thing. You guys want to start off the topic? Uh, Go ahead, Joey. Pre-orders are... Uh whatever you want early access um i've had a couple of really great ones uh, a couple off my top of my head i think one of the most favorite ones of last year has been uh starbound and uh, i think i let, mentioned in the first podcast that we did i really like indie games this year and starbound is a really great example of an awesome early access game because uh, like who doesn't want to play a game like you know sooner uh than like everybody else you know <laughs> like the sooner you can play the game the better for me uh and Betas in general sometimes can be iffy. Like I can think of some really bad examples. Like Daisy is probably one of the worst early access uh, versions I've ever seen. But you have to keep in mind that they are betas. But the biggest risk is like, of course, like you don't know if the game is actually going to get finished. Uh, like Daisy, how long has it been in early access? Like two years. About two years, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> which is uh, which is just terrible. Is <laughs> you know, it's, it, obviously like that makes you think of like a cash grab. But, like, it's all about the track record of the dev company, and, you know, when you do it, you really do gamble, but if it's for a game that you're really interested in, and it has really good reviews on Steam, uh, I think it's awesome, because you get to watch the game grow. Alright, thank you very much, Joey. What about you, Grizzly? Oh, fuck, dude. I... Fuck pre-orders, man. Straight up, I'm just gonna say it. Fuck pre-orders, and fuck people who do them, because I think it's the most fucking stupid shit a company can do it's it's basically saying like give us your money in return for nothing you know what i mean and like with, like with the pre-order shit like yeah starbound's pretty cool but i like that's probably the only game that i can say that i pre-ordered and not felt immediately fucking just dreadful for pre-ordering it like you know what i mean like fucking daisy immediately felt dreadful I pre-ordered fucking Battlefield Hardline. Immediately felt dreadful. I pre-ordered fucking Daisy. Immediately fucking regretted that shit. Like, you know, like, all these fucking games, and it's like, you know, it's like, oh, we'll finish, then we promise. And then they fucking never do. Or the game is just absolute fucking ass. And, like, they've already made off with the money, so what the fuck do they care? You know what I mean? It's like, there's no incentive for them to finish the game. It's just like, hey, like, give us your money, and once we have it, fuck you. Like, that's that's how I look at it, at least. You know what I mean? Because it, it's just like, th there's no there's no reason for them to finish the game once they have your money. I mean, you're paying full price for for something that you, like is not complete. <laughs> it's like if you were to go to the store and buy fucking, you pay pay for a full chicken, but they only gave you like a fucking chicken leg. It's like really like. Or like a fucking full loaf of bread, but they just gave you the ends. Like, you know, like, like who the fuck in their right mind would do that? Well, the thing with early access is that you have to remember that it is, like, alpha and beta stage. So, like, what you get, like, the game version that you get when you opt into early access, it's not supposed to be the finished game, you know, it's supposed to be early day. Yeah, but they should not be allowed to sell it. If it's alpha or beta, it should be free. Like, all alphas and betas mostly were in the past. So if you're if you're gonna if you want people to test your game, they fucking do it for free. That's how it works. If you start charging, like my philosophy is, if you start charging somebody for a game, you're done. You've released it. If you start charging people money for a game, it's fully released, and any criticism you receive for that game is warranted hmm. because you've started charging money for it. At that point, it's a full release. You know. I I did like how Steam implemented. Uh, I think it was after Daisy. Uh, started really fucking people over. Like they changed it so you couldn't keep changing the prices. 
uh, with like early access. Like I, I remember you guys remember that, but like Daisy kept going on sale because I kept trying to like get more and more people to buy their early access. And because obviously the dough was taking them probably way longer than they thought it was going to be, and they kept like jacking up the prices and then dropping it. It was like all over the place. So they did that to make it more consistent. Uh, I believe it can only go like up. So like now, what some companies have been doing is that they uh, you get a discount if you buy the game in early access. So like the game is like twenty dollars cheaper, which I which I like because uh, like I have no problem opting for betas. Like I opt into like Heroes of the Storm stuff like that, but I mean Blizzard is obviously a much more reputable company than half the companies on Steam, uh, like dev companies, but uh, I don't know, I like it. Like if I can get a discount and it's for a game that's been getting really good reviews and it, the game looks like it's really moving forward, like it has a lot of updates, totally for it. I mean, I can see both of your guys' opinions on this, like Grizzly saying like it, if it's an alpha or a beta, it used to be free. It was always free back a couple of years ago, but then since the green light and early access came into play, they do start charging you. I mean, I personally have bought a couple of early access games, Verdun and Rust, I think Rust is still in early access, I believe, but Verdun, which was in early access, it was still a fun game in early access, it actually recently, I think about a month ago, got actually fully released, which I believe is one of the only early access games I have managed to see get a full release, which is pretty good. But at the same time, I can see also Joey's point of view of saying if you can get the game a bit cheaper, is always a good way of saying like, oh, I can get such and such, like Daisy, for example. Like Usually over here in the UK, it's, it used to be like 19 something, but it actually went back, it went up in price for some weird reason, going up to like 22, 99 or some shit like that. And... Like, getting the idea of, like, getting, like, 20%, maybe 40% off, it gets the people, it gets the people thinking, wait a minute, I can get this game a bit cheaper, but at the same time, you're going to have to deal with a shit ton of bugs, glitches, which I really am not a fan of. I mean, if you're paying money for a product, you expect it to be working, but with most early access games, most of them are actually fucked, like, as I say, bugs glitches, crashes, you're going if you're not used to it, you're going to get totally pissed off and it's going to make you fuck away from early access. So there is a positive, but there's also a negative at the same time. It just depends on where and if you actually prefer doing this because at the same time you are with the early access, you can actually say to developers, there's this bug or there's this glitch or this and that and you can actually see like, the community grow. But at the same time, you are going to have to deal with a lot of stuff while the game is getting made. So it is, as I say, a positive and slash negative. But, I mean, that's personally my opinion. Some early access games, I don't mind. But games such as DayZ, I refuse to pay for that until there's a full release. I don't care what anybody says to me. Doesn't matter if it's a good game or not, unless it's out of early access, I refuse to pay for it. Because I've seen so many videos of it glitching out, so many bugs, hackers, I refuse to pay the money for it. Downright not paying for it at all. I would say, like, this is my guide to buying early access titles on Steam. Uh, don't get caught up in the hype. That's step one. Like, take a step back. Second, read the Steam reviews. Uh, try to look at maybe some other third party websites, look at reviews, watch some game footage. And then if you still really like everything that you're seeing, consider um, like consider if you're able to be able to handle the bugs and the glitches. Because most of the time, 98% of the time, is going to be tons of bugs and glitches. You have to be able to deal with that. So uh, take those things into consideration and do those steps. And then at the end, decide if you want to buy in. And also take into consideration that the game may not ever be released. Well, that's some good points from both Grizzly and Joy here. We're going to go on to the second topic of the podcast, and that is piracy and gaming. Now, everybody knows what piracy is. Basically, it's the most easy thing to do on PC. You can go on Pirate Bay or another pi- pirate website. I'm not really too sure other ones myself, but it's not Pirate Bay. 
pretty much what you can do is you can go on, search up a game, say Call of Duty or maybe Skyrim, and you can basically just go on to it, download it, and crack it, and then you have a fully working game that you can play without having to pay any money. Now, the reason I bring this one up is because publishers are saying that it hurts sales and it also hurts the developers. But I want to see why people do piracy and I want to see from two other people's opinions. Um, Grizzly, if you'd like to start this one off. Oh yeah, um, I do this. I'm not going to fucking sit here and lie, I pirate games. And I'll tell you the reason why I do it is because if a game comes out with the high price tag usually of $60 or more, depending on if it's a fucking Ultimate Edition or a whatever, you know, it's, I want to see what the game's about, right? And I can't do that if I'm looking at fucking trailers on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, I can see other people play it, but I don't get that fucking feeling of, of actually playing the game and seeing if I enjoy it. You know what I mean? It's one thing to watch another person play a game, but you can't really know if it's something that you're going to like. You know, so what I will normally do is, like, for instance, like, let's, Witcher 3, for example. You know what I mean? Like, that came out, and it's something where it's like, okay, like, do I want to buy this game? Do I want to fucking blow the full 60 bucks on it? And if I do, because that's a lot of money to me. I don't know about most people, but $60 to me is a fucking lot of money. I don't have that just lying around. You know what I mean? I can't just fucking throw 60 bucks willy-nilly on fucking games left and right. And, you know, so, like, you know, I'll fucking pirate the game, play a little bit of single player, and if I really enjoy the game, I'll go ahead and I'll buy it on Steam. Because what you, what, the way it used to be, like, back when I used to play, you know, single player games or whatever, um, the way I, the way that I, that used to be is, like, you could play a demo of a game, you could play a beta of a game, you know what I mean? And, and you would, you'd be able to tell, like, okay, is this something that I'm gonna like? Most game developers come out and be like, oh, play the demo. And you get to play like one or two levels and, you know, and that's cool. And you get the, you get the feel of the game. And it's something that, that game developers just don't do anymore. And so it, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, what do you expect? You know what I mean? Like, like you expect people to just take you for your word. You know, like, I, I'm not a big fan of, of, of trusting people on their word. Like, if you tell me, like, oh, we've got this new game and it costs a shit ton of money... But it's really good, just believe us. Like, no, like, I'm sorry, but I, I like a little proof in my pudding, you know what I mean? So, um, that, that's basically why I do it, and, and I've seen a few developers, like the developers of that one game, I forget what it is, but it's like that side scrolly fucking, like, it's like that side scrolly World War II, like, oh, survival like game. Hearts, or this War of Mine. I believe that's yeah, it. this war of mine. They actually went onto like the Pirate Bay or like like many like mainstream torrent websites and said, you know, torrent our game and if you like it, please buy it. And it's like I respect that. It's like holy shit, like even the developers like, hey, try out our game. You know what I mean? And if you like it, please support us. Like that's cool, you know, like I'm all for that. But I, I'm just not a big fan of fucking taking people for their word because like you get companies like EA and fucking Activision and Blizzard and fucking everybody else uh, under the fucking sun that'll tell you our game is the best in the world and 99.9% .9 of the time it's usually not. Some good points there, Grizzly. Some good points. Um, Joey, what's your stance on this? Uh, me, myself, I've actually never pirated uh, games, you know. But uh, like I totally understand, and I don't really con like condemn people that do it. Uh, it's like I know a lot of people out there have like the kind of feeling they do with music, like why buy it when I can get it for free? Uh, but I like I agree with Chris's points. Like I've been burned pretty bad on a few games this year. Hardline rings the bell. Like every episode we do is just like a Hardline, like burn fest. <laughs> like, we're all so salty about Hardline, but. And like in all seriousness, like if games didn't cost you sixty dollars and then another forty dollars for DLC, you know, <laughs> like you know maybe people would be a little bit more up to like putting up cash, you know, risking it a little bit more. And it's kind of ridiculous when you drop one hundred ten dollars on a game and you don't even enjoy it. So I understand why people do it. I mean, I can see like Grizzly's point of view. I mean, I personally have like maybe back in the day when I was like poor as shit out of pre pirated games. I mean, no, the last game I pirated was about two, three years ago maybe, was the Walking Dead Survival Instinct. A lot of people told me it was a really shit game, but I wanted to see what the fuck this game was all about. 
and don't get me wrong, I eventually did buy it on a sale, like it was like 80% off, so I thought fuck it, I'm going to buy it on a sale, but at the same time, like most games right now, they're costing like over here in the UK for a PC game on like a retail store, like such as Game, I mean over there it's GameStop I think, but pretty much over here for a PC copy of a game is £40, which roughly equivalents to about $50, $60 maybe. And most of the time, the games are either broken or they're just plain shit. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, there has been a couple of games, like, as, as everyone here says, Hardline, definitely. I think Evolve a tiny bit because that, that PC fan base died down quite fast, to be honest. And also at the same time, the cost of games nowadays is more expensive than they were, what, 10 years ago on like PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube days. So I can see why people go and do it because most people don't have 60 bucks, 40 pounds to go throw at a new video game every single week. No one does it, I mean, unless you've got a good fucking paying job. But most gamers don't. I mean, most of us actually go to like G2A or... GOG or Green Man Gaming to find a decent sale on a game and if we can't find that then most people will go to Pirate Bay because they'll realise wait a minute I can get this game for free and I'll be able to play it for free but at the same time publishers need to realise that we as gamers can't really afford 60 bucks a game every time especially at Christmas time where every fucking game comes out at no like starting from September, finishing up December. Most people are fucking broke, and most of the games that we all want do come out at that time. So, most I can see why people most mostly go to piracy because most of them are broke. They want to try out the game, and I can I understand where Grizzly's coming from. Like, you used to be able to get like um, demos and stuff, but it's but now. You're lucky to even get a demo of a AAA game like Call of Duty or even Battlefield or Diablo or stuff like that. You don't really get a demo nowadays. It's like you're very small. Like I've seen a couple of indie theme, like indie indie games, actually do demos, which is pretty cool because it gives you an idea of if you're going to enjoy the game. But at the same time, it's just what the fuck happened to the demos? Like give us a small piece of the action to see if we're going to enjoy this. If not, most most gamers are going to go to Pirate Bay, download the game, and see if they like it or not. And that makes that's why piracy is still a thing because most games are expensive as shit, and most of them do suck. That's the problem with it. I see, but at the same time, piracy is it kind of gives us an gives us gives us an idea of whether a game is good or not, and whether we've wasted our money or not. Well, I think you're also, like, another big thing that I've got to mention is that, okay, like, when you pirate a game, like, you can't play multiplayer, right? right. So, it's like, if you, if you fight, like, it's just impossible, because most games nowadays have, like, fucking third-party DRM, or whatever, where it's like, you can't fucking log into the servers, and, like, it'll know that you're using a cracked key, blah, blah, blah. And it's pointless, like, like far, you know, Far Cry, you can't fucking play multiplayer, fucking Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, you can't play multiplayer, but, you know, Battlefield Hardline, you can't play multiplayer. So really all you're getting is the fucking single player campaign out of these games, and, and when you realistically think about it, like, how many people buy these games for the fucking single player? Like, probably, like, like 2%, I'm guessing. Pro probably not a very, like, you know, a, a, a very like minor 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 majority of the population probably buy a game for its fucking single player so it's just you know just to get an idea of like what the game is right mm -hmm. i mean it just gives you a general idea of what you're getting into if you're going to enjoy it and if you do enjoy it you probably will go find a sale or you'll just buy it on the platform that it's required on but also, it gives you an idea of whether you want to waste your money or, well, not waste your money per se, but spend your money on something that's actually good, or if you get or you feel you're going to get burned and spend on, spend your money on something that's not going to be fun at all for you, personally. I mean, that's just the way I see it, and I think Grizzly sees it the way I see it as well. I, I kind of like how you mentioned uh, like demos and stuff. I was just thinking about the same thing, but it's kind of funny, like oh, yeah. pirating. Pirating in Russia, like Russia is a massive, 
like we think U.S. is bad, but Russia is ten times if not more worse with pirating, and uh, that's that's why like G2A even exists for us is because they can get the keys and uh, and Russia and sell them cheap. But you know maybe that's something they need to consider possibly moving to the U.S. is cheaper games uh, <laughs> because people are broke <laughs> and the games are just the prices are just going up and up instead of going down. That's uh, some good points. Right, we are going to take a small break. We are going to actually have a song being played right now. This is a band called State Lines from Canada. They are a country rock, country slash rock, rock band. And they are found on YouTube. I'll be putting a link into the description box. And if you like the song that you're going to hear, I will also put a link in the iTunes. You can also find them on Twitter, I believe. If I can find them on Twitter, I will put a link in the description box down below. But until then, we hope you guys enjoy the song, and we will see you guys very shortly. And we are back. So, we hope you guys enjoyed the song. If you did, make sure to check the band out. We'll be putting links in in the description box. But we are on for the third topic. We have two more topics left to talk about. And that's the next one that we are talking about is the pre-owned, is our pre-owned games hurting the gaming industry. Now, what I mean by this is the pre-owned games that you find in GameStop or over here in the UK game that the money goes to the shop and not the developer and what publishers say is that these are hurting the game industry saying that they are getting the money but we are not getting a piece of the money now which one of you guys would like to start or if you don't mind I'd start this one because I have personally worked in the game industry and I, I know a bit of this to be honest if you guys want me to start first you can start first I mean I have a little yeah, bit to ahead. talk about but not a whole lot 
I, well, in fact, I'll go last because I've got a good bit to talk about. Uh, if you guys want to go first, then. Sure. Uh, like, I used to play console, I used to play PS3. Um, uh, that was at least maybe a year or two ago. And uh, I bought a couple of used games, um, but I was never really big on it. I, uh, I switched over to, uh, like, straight downloads from PSN. I uh, stopped buying retail copies because it was kind of like a pain in the butt. <laughs> And uh, like scratch discs and stuff. It was just I was sick of having games destroyed. But I bought a couple of games pretty cheap, and it was nice. Um, but uh, I don't know. It was kind of cool, like being able to bring back physical copies as well and getting some money back. But I can understand how that hurts uh, the game devs because with consoles, they make their money from the games, not the consoles themselves. Uh, so I can understand how they can take a big chunk out of their profits. But uh, to be honest, I don't. I don't ever really met anyone else that paid PS3 that just didn't get their games from the PSN store anymore. That actually like, went and bought physical copies. And Grizzly. Um, what was the subject again? <laughs> it was about um, the pre-owned industry, uh, like pre-owned games hurting developers and publishers. Nah, I don't, like when it comes to that, I don't really fucking care because that's all console bullshit. I don't play consoles. I think people that play consoles are getting a subpar experience, and you know, <laughs> PC master race problems right there. PC master race is pretty much it. No, what you know still- what I mean. It's like you're like, oh, I fucking, what, like, what am I gonna do? Like, oh, I bought Counter Strike for fucking three dollars. Let me go fucking, what am I gonna do? Go turn it in? Like, <laughs> fucking, we get games so cheap, it doesn't even fucking matter. Like, who cares? Fucking pre own this, pre own that. Fucking get off your console, get a PC, play a real fucking video game. That's all I have to say about it. Oh man, you're gonna start a fucking console flame war, man. <laughs> I'm just telling it like it is, bro. Like, uh, thanks you know, a lot. Like, that was give so me much. everybody. Send Grizzly all of your Destiny CDs <laughs> so I can scratch them with a fucking key and send them back to you. Like, <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Oh, damn you, man! I'm gonna lose subscribers and I'm gonna get so much hate. Well, oh, you know, I mean, you asked my opinion, bro. <laughs> At least you're honest. That's all I can say is at least you're honest enough. Yeah. But um, pretty much like um, like I used to work in a video game store. I used to work in Game, which is pretty much the biggest retail gaming store over here in the UK, the United Kingdom. And pretty much I would sell main like most of the games that I sold were pretty much brand new. But about forty percent of the time, it always was a pre-owned game. The reason is because as we said earlier on, of the piracy thing, was that games are fucking far User too expensive. Joined your channel. I mean, you're talking about games that are like 40 to User 60 left bucks, your channel. depending on what console you get. And you can get cheaper games, like, perfect example I would say is Call of Duty. Like, if you go back and get Call of Duty, let's say Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, when it came out, like, about a year ago, most places brand new were, sell, were still selling it for £20. But if you got it pre owned, you were getting it for like £3.99, £4.99. And that's the reason why most people will go will go and get fucking pre owned because it is much, much, much cheaper. I mean, you can get more games pre owned than you can buy, and then you can get brand new. I mean, I could pick up about 10 games for the exact same price of a brand new £60 game. And the reason that is because the games are much more cheaper. But at the same time, I can see why the publishers are saying, but we're not getting any money because the money does go to the retail it goes to retailers because brand new games brand like retail only gets about two to three percent at the most and all the rest of it goes back to the publishers and developers. So when it comes to the pre owned industry well, when it comes to pre-owned games, I should say, when that game gets sold, the money stays with the retailer. But at the same time, all these publishers and developers complaining, oh, the pre-owned industry is hurting us, we don't get any money, we don't get money, we don't get our 60... You made fucking 60 bucks off that game when it got first sold. What the fuck are they fucking complaining about? I don't really see the... the, I don't really... Personally, I don't can't really figure out how it's going to be a huge hit like hit on the like publishers like i think console players should at least get 
some break where they can get a game that's you know not ninety dollars. But uh, like I feel like like the people like their core sales are definitely going to be within launch. Like when GTA Five launched on PS3 on Xbox, you guys remember how many sales it had? Oh like, yeah, it made it up was, like a billion dollars in three days. Yeah, and that wasn't pre-orders. That, you know that was just those were people ready for the hype. They're ready to get it. Like I feel like pre-orders are more. Like for the people that you know, the game's been out for like six, seven months, and now they want a good deal on it. Like, and they can either buy the retail copy for like the same ridiculous price of like fifty dollars, maybe went down five bucks, or they can get a nice pre-order. You know, that somebody's used their game and they got a little cash back for it. Like, I think it's a good system. Like, I, I, I can't really, I could see maybe you know pre-orders taking you know one to five percent of their profits, but I can't, I can't imagine it's a huge chunk. I mean, to be honest, like, the pre-owned, it doesn't hurt as much as they say. I mean, this is coming from a guy who worked in-game and sold pre-owned, and majority of the time it was always brand new. But at the same time, when they say, but we're not getting the money, they did make that 60 bucks, they made that 60 pound, they made their money when that first copy got sold. Whatever happens to it, happens. Whatever happens to the game next is not in their not gonna go back to them because I like I could take like Grand Theft Auto when it came out I could have said like I don't like this at all even though I wouldn't fucking say that it's a fucking great game but people who get the game and are just like oh this is not a great game they can't go and refund that game because it's been opened game stores won't take it back publishers and developers won't give their money back for it so what are they meant to do they trade it in they get money to put towards a new game Someone else will get that game a bit cheaper than what it is brand new. So even it helps out the retailers and the gamers who are poor. Like most, like I used to fucking buy a shit ton of pre-owned games myself. I mean, I've most of my uh, PlayStation 3 games are all pre-owned. Because, as I say, most of them are like £40. Which is just out of my fucking price range. I don't mind paying like 10 to 20 even 25 I don't mind paying for a pre-owned game. But I refuse to fucking flat out pay 40 50 for a game that I can get pre-owned for like 39 so I can get 10 15 off it. I don't mind that. So that's yeah. just... There, there, should, there should be an option for the savvy console consumer, you know, that you know can't really either swing the 60 bucks or just doesn't want to like does is okay with waiting like we do the same thing on steam you know we wait a lot of people they wait for games to be out for a month or for like the spring's steam sale or something so they get a game for the deal like uh you know there should absolutely be <laughs> some way that console gamers can get their games cheap i mean that's just like, that's personal the way i see it i mean i used to be a console gamer for like 18 years so like, hey, sure, sure. <laughs> God damn it, you missed it, Joey. He he's gonna start a fucking flame war on my fucking channel and tell me man, I'm gonna have so much hate. Fuck it, I'll send the hate to you, cause it's okay. <laughs> P.O. box me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but that is pretty much what we have for the pre-owned topic. Now the last topic is a bit controversial, I guess controversial depending on how you say it but the last topic that we have is about the pre-order bonuses that you get if you pre-order now what i mean by this is if you see a video game such as like far like um, e3 when they always show a gameplay up this like gameplay they say pre-order pre now at such and such and you will get an exclusive such and such dlc story mode Guns, ammo, no ammo, fucking armor, shit like that. Mm. But is this a good idea or is it a bad idea? And we're going to start off with Grizzly. Don't start off with me. You can start off with me. <laughs> with Joey then. <laughs> well, there, to me, there's two levels of pre-order bonuses. Uh, there is cosmetic items and then there's content. Cosmetic items, I'm totally for. Like, if you want to give some incentive to the people who are willing to risk pre-ordering your crap game, <laughs> give it to them. Uh, like, I love it to see, like, like skins, like car skins, gun skins, ammo skins, uh, maybe, like, a vanity pet, 
uh, something along those lines, something that doesn't affect the gameplay, doesn't give you an advantage over other players as terms as actual core gameplay. Completely fine with it. I think it's great. Uh, I think that's a nice little bonus, like a little gift for priority. Uh, but when you get like exclusive story content, when you get uh, like part of a game DLC that you cannot get unless you're pre-order, that's kind of BS. Uh, like let's talk about Dying Light. Uh, Dying Light was a great title that released last year. Uh, I pre-ordered it because of they yeah, it were going to release this year. It did come it out this out, year. Yeah, it oh. came out at the end of January. Oh, that's right. Yep, came out this year. Uh, and they released what their original plan was: if you pre-order, you could get the Be the Zombie mode, which is a super awesome, fun mode. But the Steam community went wild. I don't know if any of you guys remember, but they're like, "That's so unfair! You have to pre-order like that's like half of the game, and you're not going to release it unless we pre-order it." Like this is BS. And they ended up changing it, uh, fixing it because of the outrage. Um, but that definitely pushed me to pre-order it because I was like, "I don't want to miss that." Like I had such hype for Dying Light. Um, but even I thought that was like a little bullshit. But I fell for it because I really wanted to play it. I mean, like the pre, like pre-order lies, like um, like there's only a few select games that I will, but I have personally pre-ordered, like Grand Theft Auto and stuff. But those are games that I would knew, that I knew were gonna be good. But at the same time, with like the whole idea is like um, like publishers saying we will give you this exclusive item so you can sell towards the market so they'll spend the five bucks to put a pre-order down, so we'll make money. Now, with pre-orders, as Joey says, you've got the cosmetics and you also have DL story DLC. Games such as like Far Cry 4, I don't, mean, if, I don't know if you guys know about this, but if you pre-ordered the game, you basically, I think it was two, diff, I think it was either one or the other. I think, no, tell a lie, it was a cosmetic weapon, it was basically a harpoon that you got, and it was the only way you could get this weapon was pre-ordering the game. Now, I think that's a bit shady, because you're basically taking a part of the game out, and basically selling it to selling it to us, so we'll have, a, as I say, I use quotation marks, a full experience. I mean, it is pretty shitty, because... Most people nowadays don't even really bother with pre-orders, like with digital or Steam, they just get it day one or they'll wait because we've all been burned so much within the past year, like Assassin's Creed Unity, that came out all fucky, like that was just a terrible fucking game and so many people pre-ordered that game and it made its money back first day before any reviews or any gameplay videos were up because of the embargoes that they had. And that's basically pushed people away saying, well, what happens if I pre-order another game and it's going to be the exact same? It's not going to work, it's not going to play well, it's just going to be all fucky. What's the point? And then they turn around and do this, like, um, oh, but we'll give you, like, a story DLC. Wait, but basically that's them taking a piece of the campaign or a piece of the story, ripping it out of the game so they can sell it to us as I say, full experience. That's a bit shady for me personally because I don't agree with that because you're basically taking a part of the game and you're making it not a full experience. I mean, if, I, if I'm if i paying full price for a game, I expect it to be fully finished with everything in it, not bits taken out so you can sell me as a pre-order exclusive or a pre-order bonus because at the same time, you're just taking stuff away from the full experience, which I personally don't agree with. I mean, I mean, there's only like one game that I am going to pre-order this entire year, and that is the Batman game because Rocksteady have got a great track record. They make great games, and I'm fucking seriously fucking hyped up for the new Batman game. <laughs> but any other game, I will refuse to fucking pre-order because, like Battlefield, I pre-ordered that game and I got fucking burned because of the fucking netcode. Assassin's Creed Unity, I know people who got burned because it was so fucked. Diablo 3, when it was fucking online only and the servers were fucking down. This is why we don't really pre-order anymore and why we shouldn't because most games nowadays are either broken or they're just shit and we're gonna waste money. I mean, it's just a bad idea. But, I mean, that's my, that's my own personal opinion. But we've not heard from Grizzly yet. Grizzly, go on your <laughs> rant. Go on my rant, eh? 
Yes. We're talking about pre-orders and like bonus bullshit, right? Yep. Hard okay. it. That's pretty much that's pretty much my whole entire fucking thing right there. <laughs> bonus bullshit. Hardline. So rant. It's it's pretty much like okay, like the way I look at it is, dude, is like okay, like first let's take let's take something like what's that? A uh, Dead Space, right? Where it's like oh, pre-order Dead Space and get the fucking Isaac Clark Battleborn skin. You'll be the only one who can wear this skin in the single player game. It's like, dude, who the fuck cares? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, dude, like the only thing they're doing, I, I don't know. The only thing that I fucking equate it to is, is it's borderline fucking prostitution. You know what I mean? Where it's just kind of like, hey, like fucking spend your hard earned money on something that's not even ready for stores yet. And we'll fucking throw in this meaningless piece of crap. You know, it's 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 like... I don't know, it just reminds me that, like, in the olden days where, you know, like, those cereal box fucking games or, like, whatever, where it's like, oh, send send Kellogg's $5 and you'll get the x-ray glasses. And, and as a bonus, if you spend $10, you'll get the fucking compass, like, or the GPS navigation spy detector kit. It's just like, dude, who the fuck cares? Like, who's dumb enough to buy this shit? Apparently a lot of people... Because it's like a big fucking thing now, right? Like, I, I don't know where, it, like, like when the gaming industry or we as gamers got to the point to where it's like, you know, we, we have the fucking attention span of fucking small children or, you know, or, or like, like, you know what I mean? Where it's just like, dude, like, I, I don't know. I, personally, I just fucking hate that, you know? It's like, oh, fucking spend money on something that you can't physically see and we'll fucking give you something else for as, as a bonus. That's that's how I look at it, dude. I, I don't look at it as any different as is, is like their their whole beta campaign, the shit we talked about in the last podcast, where you know it's like oh pay pre order the game and you can get into the beta. Like all oh, it is, it, it's, it's a fucking prostitution job. They're they're no better than pimps that fucking sit on the corner and fucking push their girls towards John's cars. It's just like fucking come try the product. Oh, pay pay me for this. You know, like, all they're like, hey, does this look good to you? Fucking spend your hard-earned money. <laughs> like, you know, it's... It's, it's fucking like, stupid, right? Like, I've actually done quite a few pre-orders. Uh, like, my biggest thing why I do it is because I like to get on a hype train. Like, I like to go to the store, I get a couple of monsters, wait for launch. Like, I do it for mostly for preloading. So I like to, like, sit there, wait for launch, like, have my game ready, and then when it hits my night, like, spam play. And then just play all night. Like, I'll make it like a two day affair. Like, there's a few games. I think uh, I'm just going through my Steam library. I like pre ordered The Crew. I had a lot of fun with that. Dying Light pre ordered. That was an awesome Tuesday to Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a few other games, but I mean, that's that's just my personal game experience. Like, I love having the game ready to go, staying up all launch, like talking to people like who are in like the chat channel for the game, and like, oh my god, this is gonna be the greatest, and like getting all excited, and then uh, like having a lot of fun. So, like, there's only one game this year that I've been burned on for pure. Actually, I think, and that was Hardline, and it wasn't as much as a burn as it was like I was just disappointed. I think that was my biggest thing. It was just it wasn't what I thought it was gonna be. I mean, it's still a playable, semi-enjoyable game, but it's just not what I wanted. And I could have returned. I could have returned it day one, but I didn't, and I kind of was like, eh. But I'm over it, I guess. I mean, I, I think I spent about, I think six thousand last year, uh, on uh, equipment, peripherals, and games. So like, I mean, you know, I'm not shy about spending money on video games, but it kind of sucks when you when you drop money on a video game and you don't even like it. it. Sucks. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much all we have for today's episode. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Leave any comments and hate comments for Grizzly. I'll make sure he gets them. <laughs> <laughs> and, yep. yep uh, hey, hey, hey. Don't forget to join us on EmpireGaming.ca. Apply to the clan. You can play five Don't games forget with me. to tell me how much you hate me. <laughs> Oh yeah, if you're looking for any clans to join, make sure if you're 18 and over and you want to look for a PC gaming clan, head over to empire.com.ca. We are recruiting. We're always playing either Counter-Strike, either... What else are we playing nowadays? Counter-Strike? Titanfall, Osu. Titanfall. Playing a lot of Osu. Osu. Check Osu. that out. And we pretty much just play any FPS or anything that anybody likes to play. We've been actually playing a lot of Killing 4 too. So if you're playing Killing 4 too, you don't have anybody to play with. 
head Grand over Theta. to Grand Theft Auto as well. Basically, we're also playing a bunch of different games. So if you're looking for a clan, head over to Empire.ca. You'll find us there and just basically say that either Empire podcast sent you. It makes us look good. <laughs> and also, if you want to find out more about Stateline, links will be in the description box down below. And also, the Twitter links for me and ER Joey slash Paw will be in Twitter. Grizzly is an old grumpy fuck who does not have Twitter. Get with I the young hate team. the world! <laughs> Come play video games with us. Woo! Yep. But until next time, we hope you guys enjoyed the Empire podcast number two, and we should see you within the next week or two weeks. So until then, we see you goodbye. Peace out. Rawr, I'm angry. Beat me up, Scotty. Alright, see you guys later. Bye.